Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am super excited because I am filming my July TBR. So I can't believe we're already in July, but I'm really looking forward to it because it has two really great readathons. So we have the Reading Rush and also the Fuckathon. So first, let's go ahead and talk about the Reading Rush, which is from July 20th to the 26th hosted by Ariel, Bissett, and Raylene. So they have seven different challenges, and I have three books which fit all of those challenges. So the first challenge in this readathon is to read a book that has your birthstone color on the cover, which I think is really adorable. So I'm November, so my birthstone is citrine slash blue topaz. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and read The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I've been really looking forward to this. So this has both colors, actually. It has the citrine-y, like, light pale yellow amber, and it also has the blue topaz color. This also works for the second challenge, which is to read a book starting with the word the. So we are following a 40-year-old social worker who is sent to this house um, on the edge of the sea, and it is a home orphanage for kind of wayward creature children. So there are little pixies and devils, sprites, and wyverns, which are like little dragons. And they're kind of the kids that don't get along with other kids. Um, and I believe it is also an MM romance between the social worker and the man who runs the orphanage. And I'm just like, I love it. I also love, love, love TJ Klune. So I am super excited to get to this one. So the next book, I'm also combining two challenges, and one is to read the next book you touch, and the other challenge is to read a book that you were inspired to pick up after watching the movie. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stieg Larsson, who is a Swedish writer, and this is translated. And then also Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asimov. This is not Call Me By Your Name, it's Giovanni's Room, which I read. Um, earlier, but for the sake of this prompt, it's going to be Call Me By Your Name because I have the ebook. So uh, it's going to be one of these two, but I'm going to get some assistance from my husband. Okay, so my husband is just off cam with the two books, and he's going to go ahead and like mix them up in front of my face, and then whichever one I touch first without seeing is the one that I'm going to read for these two challenges. So, okay, I'm not going to look, not going to peek. Let's go. Okay, are you doing it? Yes, I am. Okay, ready? Dee! Ta-da! Okay, so the answer is Call Me By Your Name by Andre Osman, uh, who is an Egyptian-American author, and this is an MM romance set in the summertime. I've been meaning to read it forever. Call Me By Your Name is one of our favorite movies of all time, like one of the best romance movies of all time, in my opinion. My husband's agreeing with me. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I'm really, really looking forward to this. And it does check off two of the challenges. And the final book that I'm going to get to for The Reading Rush is The Electric State by Simon Stollenhog. This is a Swedish translation. This one checks off three of the Reading Rush challenges. So it checks off book that you're going to read entirely outside of your house. So we have um, a lovely front yard grassy area. So I'm going to go ahead and picnic read this outside because it's only 140 something pages. Um, this also works for a book in a genre you want to read more of. So this is translated and I'm really trying to focus on books which are translated or outside of the US and UK. So it works for both of them. And the last challenge that it works for is uh, to read a book that takes place on a continent you don't currently live on. So I currently live in Australia and this is set in North America, but like a fictionalized North America, but still. So Australia to North America, so I'm safe. So the three that I will be reading for the Reading Rush specifically are House on the Cerulean Sea, Electric State, and Call Me By Your Name by Andre Osman, and I am freaking pumped. Let me know down below if you are also reading for the Reading Rush. Um, it is a week long, so I like to try and read fewer books so that I can actually accomplish it because I get like super stressed if I give myself seven books in seven days. So instead we have three books in seven days, which is totally doable. The other readathon that I'm really excited to participate in is the Fuckathon hosted by Noria at Noria Reads. Uh, this one is all about saying fuck to different types of institutions uh, that you don't agree with. So basically there's a bingo board and you have to make an F. So for me, uh, there are five books that I'm gonna read to check off the F. So uh, first up is Fuck Ableism, 
uh, read a book that has a main character who has a disability. And for this one, I'm gonna read A Cage of Butterflies by Brian Caswell, who is an Australian writer. So I read the first chapter of this a while ago, and this is following a group of young people who are at a think tank, and the main character um, doesn't have use of his legs. So he is like this young genius, but kind of in this dystopian setting. It sounds really good and really dark. And I believe that the kids here in Australia read this for school, so I'm always up for more Australian lit. The next one I'm gonna check off is Fuck Capitalism, read a book which has anti-capitalist sentiments or also a main character who swindles the system. Uh, so this one is a double up, and this is The Electric State. This is about uh, a North America that has not recovered from the age of machines and all of the machines are kind of broken down and people that were sucked into like gaming and the online world are still connected to the machines. And we're following a young girl who travels across North America with her robot. Uh, Simon Stallenhog is Swedish, but one of his graphic illustrations was actually made into an Amazon Prime or Hulu uh, mini series called From the Loop, I think. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. It's about a particle accelerator. So if I like this, then I'm gonna really, really wanna watch that show. So the next one I wanna take off is Fuck Book Elitism. Uh, and for this one, I'm gonna read Defy the Worlds by Claudia Gray. I read the first one, Defy the Stars, last month or the month before, and I just freaking loved it so, so much. Um, and it is YA, sci-fi, fantasy, romance. It has like all of the tropes, but it's just good. It's just like, Sometimes you just want chocolate ice cream, you know? Like, it's not the best for you. It's not the most complex. It's not gonna completely blow your socks off, but you have a damn good time reading it. And, like, yeah, this is, like, younger YA. It's definitely written, I think, like, at a younger level, but damn is it good. So, fuck book elitism. I just really want to read read this novel. So the next challenge I want to read for is fuck slut shaming. Uh, and this one is to read a novel where a character is having lots of sex and is, you know, proud of it. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and read His Cocky Cellist by Cole McCade, who is the same queer Asian author who wrote His Cocky Ballet, which was really, really good. So if you are into MM uh, romance that deals with some uh, light sprinkling of BDSM elements, I haven't read it yet, I don't know, uh, but the author seems to write that kind of thing, uh, then this would be for you to check out. I certainly am very much anticipating it. The last one I'm gonna check off for the readathon is Fuck Theological Fundamentalism. <laughs> and for that, I'm going to go ahead and read Purple Hibiscus by Chimamande Ngozi Adichie. Uh, this one is following Kimbili, who is 15 years old, when there is a military coup in Nigeria and she is sent away from her very, very strict Catholic upbringing into this new family uh, with her aunt and discovers that there's a different way to life than the very strict religious way that she was brought up. Yeah, I think it should just be pretty interesting. And I uh, am looking to read more Adichie because I think I've read one or two other things and definitely need to get to this one and I know I have one more on my shelf as well. So really, really looking forward to this. Okay, so that covers the two readathons. I have three other books that I'm aiming to get to in July. Uh, the first one I wanna talk about is The Only Good Indians, which I'm going to be buddy reading with Jordaline. This was like an immediate buddy read situation when it popped up on our radar. Um, it is following indigenous men who trespass in their youth on land that they're not supposed to go on. Uh, and then they are hunted down by, I think like a demonic energy later on in their life. And I'm like, yes, it's also own voices. And I'm like, this sounds so good. So like when, I don't remember who knew of it first, Jordan or I, but we were basically like, buddy read, buddy read, take our money, okay. So we'll probably be reading this on the 14th because that is the exact day it comes out. I hope that Australia releases it at the same time. We shall see. And the last two books are books that I have checked out from my library. So they're kind of random just because I requested them and then they came faster than I anticipated. So the first one I want to talk about is Knots and Crosses by Mallory Blackman, who is a black UK writer. 
and I heard lots and lots and lots about this book and it's not popular I think in America or maybe I missed it but I think like all the kids all the youths here in Australia read this book it's a dystopian world where the knots as in like circle knot is they are all inferior white citizens and then the upper class are the crosses who are black people. So it's like a reverse soci dystopian society. Um, so it just sounded super interesting to me and I never heard about it in America, but everyone here knows about it. Like when I got, got to the library to request it, she was like, oh, it's so good. And then when I picked it up, another librarian was like, oh yeah, I've read that, that's so good. And I was like, must be good. And the last one on my July TBR is The Book of Phoenix, uh, Who Fears Death 0 0.5 uh, by Nnedi Okorafor. So I recently, a few weeks ago, spent a lot of money <laughs> in ordered books because all the stores were closed and I had like a fit about like not having books on my shelves, which is ridiculous, but I just felt like I had nothing to read. <laughs> so one of the things I ordered was Who Fears Death? It was published so long ago that it's no longer held in like bookstores. So when I ordered it, I realized that there's 0.5 at the library for some reason. They don't have one, number one, which is Who Fears Death, but they have The Book of the Phoenix, which takes place before the one I ordered. So this sounds amazing. The main character is Phoenix, known as an accelerated woman who basically has all of these superpowers. Um, she's known as a research project, a test subject, a specimen, an abomination, an accelerated woman, which is a genetic experiment grown and raised in Manhattan's famous Tower 7. And basically it's like this uh, futuristic kind of uh, world where she is one of the strongest, but then when one of her friends in the tower, I think, tries to escape or commit suicide, she realizes not everything is as she assumed it was, and this sets off the chain for the book that I ordered. So I am really excited to get to this. I haven't heard about it much, but if you guys have read this, let me know. I'm a huge Akorafor fan, so like, can't freaking wait. So yeah, those are the 10 books that I am super, super excited to get to in July. Please let me know what you guys are gonna read down below in the doobly-doo. Hope that you all are doing super well. I will chat to you guys in another video soon. Probably a massive, June wrap up part two. I've read something like 13 books. It's insane. So <laughs> I will chat to you then. Thank you so much for watching. If you have watched this far, comment a unicorn emoji down below. Okay, see you next time. Bye!